camera is not quite level, but then you wouldn't have noticed unless I'd said something, and now it's all you can think about. There is nothing worse than when you film something for 20 minutes and you think, that went really well, and then you look back on the footage and the camera wasn't even rolling, and you've just been talking to yourself for 20 minutes. So it's the beginning of the new year, and here I am with a late review of the year. Thanks to Chris Sparks for this template, and thanks for Chris Williamson for gently and persistently prodding me to do this review. And there's a few lessons that have come out of this that I think will be really valuable for you. So to start with, what I've learned from business this year. The main theme of this year has been cutting the fluff and focusing down on a single metric. That way we've been able to progress much faster than we have in the past when we've been so fragmented and trying to do multiple things at once. Now we've dialed things down into one funnel, one product, and one metric that we're optimizing for. For us, that metric was opt-ins. It might be different for you. It could be podcast listeners or Twitter followers or YouTube subscribers or anything like that. But the important thing is to figure out what is your needle mover metric and double down on it and focus all of your efforts towards that. Now I can definitely hear you thinking, but what about Goodhart's law? Of course you were thinking that. Goodhart's law is when the measure becomes the target, it ceases to become an accurate measure. This is true to an extent, and it depends on the choice of metric that you use. But if you pick a number and you're really focusing on trying to influence that number at all costs, it could take you a bit further away from the underlying thing you're trying to influence. For example, if you say, I'm going to lose weight, and you focus just on the number, you'll be cutting off legs and things to try and lose as much weight as possible. So you have to have that target within some kind of context of why am I trying to lose weight? Well, it's to look better, it's to feel better in myself, it's X, Y, Z. And the closer you can get to the core thing that you're trying to influence, the better. But that aside, Goodhart's law doesn't kick in straight away. Everything works until it stops working. And at the end of the day, we can get philosophical about it, but optimizing for something is better than not optimizing for anything. Better to move forward with something and then you can course correct along the way. The safety catch to stop you from going off course is a recurring review process, just like this annual review. This makes sure that nothing gets grandfathered in that isn't serving you. Separate planning from execution. Next, here are some lessons that I've learned from being a doctor over the last 18 months. Being a good doctor is quite an algorithmic process. At the end of the day, as a doctor, you are one big walking algorithm. You're just a very complex one. The way that you progress and become better at what you do is consistent application of the inputs, just like anything else. There's no magic trick here. And honestly, I was a bit worried this year because I'd kind of taken my eye off the ball with medicine and I thought I would struggle with the new role that I'm stepping into, which is senior house officer. And fortunately, the role came quite naturally. What I realized was that a lot of the learning that you do on the job happens unconsciously and osmotically. If you include a bit of conscious learning on top of that, then you can't fail. And that's the thing that I'm focusing on this year, which is when I see a new presentation or new condition that I've not been fully familiar with or haven't looked at since med school, is to just spend 10 minutes reading about it and try and lock that in. I've also learned that being a doctor is the most bomb-proof job that there is. I can't envisage a global situation where doctors are not needed. And when everyone around me was being furloughed, there wasn't even a sniff of job insecurity, which sounds like a great thing, but it comes with its own costs. Being a doctor is on the very low risk side of the risk barbell. It's low risk, fixed upside, maximum security, compared to being a entrepreneur, where it's very unsecure, you don't know if you're gonna eat next month, but there's a potential for massive growth. I've also been the most poor in free time than I have ever been. And I'm realizing now that free time is the truest form of wealth. You can stack up money, but you can't stack up time. Once it's gone, it's gone. And beyond a certain amount of money, there's not really much more enjoyment that you can squeeze out of it. Next, onto relationships. This year, I've really learned to reconnect with the simple pleasures, the joys of walking and eating with loved ones. Sounds like simple stuff, but I think we often forget. I've smashed it out of the park with gift buying this year. So I've used Tick Tick to have a separate person as an item with subtasks for gift ideas. 
and I've been able to prepare well in advance rather than the last minute panic for gifts. Next is asynchronous communication. You know when you're trying to set up a call with a friend and you keep missing each other and you haven't got times that you're both available? Send each other a long form video voice message. It's much more personal. It allows you to really sit and listen and process rather than just being in a frantic chat where you're trying to catch up and waiting for the next person to speak. You can also listen in two times speed with this Chrome extension. Just don't tell anyone. I've found a great hack for getting over your fear that, oh, meeting with friends isn't productive and I've got work to do, is to take multiple boxes at the same time. Eating together or walking together allows you to scratch that itch while still socializing and seeing friends, lockdown permitting. Another great source of joy has been working on a project together where you're both working towards a common goal and you're growing, you're learning about each other in the process. We've also seen this year how badly some people tolerate being in their own company. Solitary confinement is considered the top punishment that you can give someone. We've seen a massive impact on people's mental health this year. And a lot of it, I think, stems from people not being comfortable in their own company. So it's really important that we learn to embrace that, learn how to enjoy our own company, and not plug the existential gap with TikTok videos. This year has been a great reminder about cultivating fewer and deeper relationships. Unfortunately, one of our friends died last week and it was really sudden. Johnny and I had been planning to visit him this year and we didn't get the chance to. And this was a reminder really to show people that you love them and tell them that you care because you might not always have a chance to. Training, what did I learn? Well, the big win for me was getting flares on the floor. Finally, I got six messy flares, but I'll take that. The big lesson for me was focusing single-heartedly on a single goal rather than spreading myself too thin and not making any progress anywhere. It's definitely a recurring theme here with everything, isn't there? In trying to learn these, I very quickly had to come to terms with passive flexibility not translating into active flexibility. So specificity with training is key. Train the thing that you're trying to improve. With gyms closing, we've all had to experience blast and cruise realizing that it's much easier to maintain or regain a skill than it is to gain it for the first time. That goes for strength, flexibility, fat loss, any new skill that you're trying to develop. And on that note, gyms can close at the drop of a hat for months at a time. So it's really important that you have a backup body weight training program or some home gym kit that you can instantly switch to rather than be like, well, gyms closed, can't do anything now. Next, what I've learned from my personal growth is that actually this is the year that I've truly got my personal growth systems nailed. And I've done that by doing less. The main lesson here is that personal development in itself can become a form of procrastination. The whole world of self-development online is a rabbit hole. And you just need to get it nailed, figure out what it is that you want, set the program in motion and move on. Don't let it become another form of procrastination. The best way to look at it is like brushing your teeth. You wouldn't spend all day brushing your teeth. It wouldn't get you anywhere and you'd probably do yourself quite a lot of damage. You say to yourself, right, I'm going to do it twice a day, and then you don't think about it. So many parallels again with training. If you want to gain muscle, pick a long-term program like the Propane Protocol or 531, set it in motion and forget about it. Then in a year's time, you'll be like, oh, how did that happen? The overarching lesson is don't dabble. In 2020, we have had problems of abundance, not problems of scarcity. Any book or system that you choose to follow should be a decision that's taken with the utmost gravity. Any decent system has at least a decade of mileage in it. You don't need more tools. You need to focus on fewer things and do them better. Next lesson is burn a clean flame. You might have seen me talk about this before, but the main reason is that the vehicle that you're operating in needs to have some wiggle room in it. Otherwise, you're not going to have any spare capacity, any physical reserve to handle the punches that life throws at you. What is the habit that accounted for the most success for me this year? For me, it's been single tasking. And honestly, I've not been very good at it. The times when I have been doing it, you're like, oh my God, why aren't I doing this all the time? This requires conscious effort and consistent battles against technology, which is now moving more and more towards trying to make us multitask. We're seeing the user interface of phones and uh, operating systems 
pushing towards picture in picture and split screen and loads of notifications everywhere. So some quick wins that you can use to battle that would be full screen on everything that you do, single tab browsing, and use dual monitors where the one monitor is really just a big Pomodoro timer, a big throbbing, pulsing Pomodoro timer to say, this is what you should be doing right now. Treat yourself like a child. And if you want to see more on that, check the full system that we have for productivity here somewhere. Next, what is the most valuable way that I've spent my time? In terms of business, it's been creating content, both free and paid. And that's comprised of generating ideas for the content, clarifying those ideas, and then planning and presenting. The return on investment from making content is massive. Not only to clarify your own thoughts, but you spend an hour making a video like this, and three million people are obviously gonna watch it. The possibilities are endless. Next, with content creation, pick the medium that suits you best, and then pick a system that you know that works and just follow it. No point trying to reinvent the wheel. Most people hold back from producing content online because they want it to be perfect before they even put anything out there. You will never achieve perfection by sitting and planning. You endlessly approach perfection by doing and realizing what doesn't work and what does. This metaphor of the creativity pipeline really helps to put this into perspective. The idea is that you have to get all the sludge out first before you start to produce better and better content. And there's no way around that. You can't just open the tap a little bit. You've got to just let the crap come out first, which you might say that I'm doing right now. Next, what brought me the most happiness? Doing anything single-heartedly. It doesn't even matter what it is that you're doing. There is an inherent joy in the act of deep focus. You can turn anything into a meditative task. And the joy comes from the union with you and the task that becomes no separation. And there's actually a neurochemical basis for this as well. There's certain neurotransmitters such as anandamide, which um, comes from the word bliss, which comes from being in that flow state. I've quite enjoyed gaining clarity through writing, just through tweaking my external brain, for example, and writing for you guys. I've also very much enjoyed the stuff we've talked about before, of walking and eating with loved ones, and also just the space from being alone. The lesson here is find what makes you happy and aggressively schedule it in so that emails and things don't end up encroaching on that space. On to the big failures for this year. So the first one is my ridiculous Mortal Kombat addiction, which you will have seen from my previous video here. Horrendous. My step count. I've averaged 4,000 steps this year. That is awful. I'm gonna to have to do something about that, especially given that I'm supposed to be a bastion for fitness. Finally, I managed to lose £14,000 on the New Zealand dollar. If you want to find out more about that, look at the podcast in the link in the description below. Create a bit of mystique for that one. To wrap things up, favourite song of the year has been this. I will put the link in the description below. I guarantee you will not like it. Uh, favourite quote of the year has been from D.A. Baker, popularised by Gopi Krishna in his book about Kundalini. The dispersed, drifting or semi-awake condition of the mind is not the inwardly focused state of a true mystic or an awakened seer. The stillness of this state is the stillness of the soaring eagle, which cleaves its way through the blue with motionless wings. It is the rest that springs from an unusually large amount of actualized energy, the rest that is produced by action, unperceived because it is so fleet, so near, so all fulfilling. Must have been the original user of the word fleet there. Fleek on fleek, I'm such a granddad. So there we go, 2020 in a nutshell. I hope this was useful for you and I would definitely recommend giving the Chris Sparks review template a go. It just really helps to crystallize and consolidate some of the stuff that's happened this year because it's been a pretty eventful year for everyone. Okay, speak soon.